I wanted to share with you the real, true reason and true purpose for meeting your twin flame. So, the majority of Divine Feminines, and I'm speaking from my experience and, and simply the women that I have worked with, and when I say women, Divine Feminine can also be males, gender males, so it is not based on gender, but in my experience, they've been females. So just take it how it resonates and swap that role if need be. But most Divine Feminines have been highly triggered on this journey. And all of their fears have bubbled up to the surface. So fear, lack, abandonment, and betrayal, core wounds have been triggered by your divine counterpart, but you're likely also realizing that these have been patterns in your life for quite some time. But you've met your mirror souls, so your twin flame is the same soul essence that's your mirror soul in another body. So this is not your soulmate connection. And it cannot be treated like a soulmate connection. A soulmate connection is quite different than a twin flame um, relationship. And I say the word relationship loosely because if you're on the twin flame journey, you know why I'm using that term loosely because a relationship implies that there are two. And the twin flame journey is ultimately the journey of oneness. It's the journey uh, from head to heart. It's the journey of, of transcending duality and separation consciousness and coming into heart-centered consciousness and union consciousness. And the reason I say relationship loosely is because you are one with your twin flame on the energetic level. And I know this can be really confusing because you see this person as a separate person. In reality, you are one. And that doesn't just stop with your twin flame. This is something that is true for all beings. You are one with all beings, even though we appear as separate individuals. But I want to keep this very specific so hopefully it's not confusing because I just wanted to share some reflections and if this does help, then I would love to hear from you in the comments and let me know if it resonates. So most Divine Feminines are highly triggered in all of their abandonment and wounds and betrayal and lack and scarcity and fear are triggered. And also... It's quite common that the Divine Feminine is very much seeking external validation outside of herself in order to validate herself, to prove her worthiness and lovability and being enough. And although these things couldn't be further from the truth, this is what bubbles up when you are triggered. So what starts off as a romantic, seemingly romantic relationship quickly turns south if you're on this journey and triggers the shit out of you, sending you into a tailspin and the darkest dark night of the soul you could imagine. And this often happens in cycles sometimes. It doesn't necessarily just happen once. But you were set off in a, into a dark night of the soul and layer by layer, these belief structures are being peeled away as you open up to more heart-centered awareness, heart-centered consciousness, and oneness consciousness. And at first, this starts off as, you know, very much an empowerment journey and a, a journey of of, of self-love and um, really claiming your sovereignty 
as a worthy woman. But it also goes deeper than that because this is also simultaneously a journey into transcending the fact that there even is another. Your divine counterpart is your perfect mirror because it is you in another body, the true you, the essence of you, your divine essence, your awareness, your conscious awareness, your your soul in another body. And I want to speak to the term soul really quick because soul is often interchanged with spirit quite often and that's actually not accurate. A soul is a container for experience. So soul experiences lifetime after lifetime after lifetime as it reincarnates and it still is part of duality. It's an individualized soul is still rooted in duality. It's still rooted in separation. But let's just say it's more of a mild, lighter, energetic version of separation. It's an individualized um, individualized essence, if you will, that that animates this physical body but it's still rooted in duality it's what that's why there is a a positive and a negative polarity which is represented by the feminine and the masculine um, and this is not gender specific this is energy but that's why there is this duality um, because the soul is still rooted in duality it's not the core, core, core truth of who you are. It is a container for experience that carries over lifetime after lifetime, but it, the core essence of the soul is the essence of all that is, is spirit, is call it God, call it, call it oneness, it's really hard to call it anything because it's not something that can really be known, but we're going to talk about it now from um, a cognitive, you know, standpoint, you know, we're going to call it spirit. So I want to use a quick metaphor to help explain this. And the one that was coming to mind before I hit record on this message was that of a tree. So if you look at all the leaves on a tree, the leaves can be synonymous and a metaphor for a human being, a human incarnation, a human experience. Seemingly separate leaves on the tree, all having their individual experiences. And this would represent, again, the physical human experience. Whereas if you look deeper, beyond the leaves, behind the leaves you see clusters of branches and and twigs so these branches and twigs can represent the soul essence still appearing individualized and incarnating as a leaf so the twigs represent the energetic the energetic soul right the individualized consciousness that appears as a soul that appears as this vehicle that is able to experience lifetime after lifetime after lifetime and experience this dualistic reality so the twigs and the branches represent the soul energy the individualized souls and the individualized soul clusters that are incarnating as all of these different leaves that appear separate which happen to be the human beings, right, in this metaphor. Where if you go back a little further, you can see that all of the twigs and branches eventually all come from the same source, the trunk of the tree, which is spirit, which is what makes up everything, including all the branches and all the twigs and all the leaves. They're all technically one with with the trunk, although they appear to be taking on separate 
forms, right? But ultimately, at the core, core, core root of it all, they are all one and they are all connected, right? So you can think of your twin flame as another leaf, but you guys share the same twig. You share the same branch. You share the same individualized soul essence that kind of split into two as part of this positive and negative polarity and is now experiencing itself as two separate beings, two separate leaves. But ultimately, they are the same frequency and energetic resonance because they are the same soul. They are a mirror soul. And so when you meet your twin flame, you are highly triggered after what appears to be a very brief romantic relationship which heads south pretty quickly and then blows up in your face and you are left picking up the pieces and trying to make sense of what the F just happened. And of course you feel at home with your divine counterpart. They are the same essence as you. The reason they feel like home to you is because at their core level, they are you. They feel like what it feels like to come home to yourself, to come home to your own heart, to come home to your own essence and your own alignment with your soul. And that feels like home. And you've now experienced this in another being. And this other being just happens to also be the biggest catalyst and trigger of your life. To send you spiraling into a dark night of the soul in order to trigger these deeply rooted core wounds that the ego loves to ride on. These core wounds of abandonment, not being good enough, not being lovable... These are all rooted in fear, lack, and scarcity. Separation. And the Divine Feminine is seeking validation outside of herself, saying, okay, this is going to make me feel better. This is going to make me feel whole. This is going to make me feel complete. And it, whether it's your twin flame or some other relationship or some you know, new career or money or whatever it is, the divine feminine is used to chasing outside of herself in order to find that sense of fulfillment, which is never lasting. And now if you're on this journey, you get to experience how no matter what you do, your old ways of coping, your old ways of validating yourself or your old ways of feeling safe or secure through external form, through the external sternalized world of form just blows up in your face and causes just wreaks havoc on your life so you are being guided to go home to yourself you're being guided inward to come home to your own heart and any attempts to reach outside of yourself for validation is going to lead to suffering and this is not isolated only toward, only with your twin flame. It, of, of course, is with that as well true that any external validation uh, through your soul, which is your twin flame, seeking that external validation from them is going to lead to suffering. Your soul doesn't need to seek recognition recognition outside of itself and that's what you're being shown your soul already is the the closest thing energetically to the essence of who you truly are so when we're thinking back to the trunk of the tree your soul is is an extension of source 
And even though your soul is appearing individualized, that too is part of an illusion, right? So it's an illusion that, and when I say illusion, illusion just means that it doesn't mean something isn't real. Illusion just means that it's not what it appears to be. That's what an illusion means. An illusion means something is appearing, but it's not appearing as what it really is. So it's it's not appearing as it truly is. And so, by that definition, the leaves on the tree that are all appearing separate is an illusion because ultimately they are not separate. At the core, 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 root, root, root of the leaf, they are all energy. It's all light. It's all energy. And the soul is just, let's say it's a more refined version or a lighter version or an energetic version of the individual. It's still appearing as individual souls, but at the root, 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 core, core, core of the soul is the essence of all that is, which is energy. So basically all, ro all roads lead home to spirit. All roads lead home to the truth of who you truly are at your core, which is the source of all things, life itself, all that is, the energy that makes everything and simultaneously you're also nothing because you can't even point to it it's all energy it's all consciousness it's all light it's it's a mystery it's life's beautiful mystery and that's what you are at your core. And the appearance of being separate is an illusion. And so if you treat this journey as if you are separate and you're one leaf and then there's another leaf over there, whether that be, let's just say for this example, you're, you're referring to your twin flame and you're treating them as separate, you are buying into the illusion of separation when ultimately the truth is that you are one. And this journey isn't just to realize that you are one with your twin flame. That's not it. That's something that becomes very, very evident very quickly on this journey. Like I said, if you're on this journey, this is not a soulmate connection. And it becomes very evident that that this is not even a quote connection right i'm using air quotes here because there's just this there's this it's it's a non connection there's no separation so it's not like two are coming together as one it's like there was only one and there is only one and there always has only been one but it's appearing as two and so it's not like a soulmate where you have like a connection between two individualized souls that are appearing as two individualized people you have one soul appearing as two individualized people and so you have this magnetic polarity a positive and a negative polarity with this apparent individual even though at the base root 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 core 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 of what we all are we are all energy we are not this you know physical human body and you may be shown things like that over the course of your experience and on this journey I know I've had several out-of-body experiences and stuff like that that have shown this to me uh, life has a way because you are life that you cannot escape this process. You cannot escape this connection. You can, it is not even a connection to escape. You cannot escape your lessons. You cannot escape what your, your soul is here to learn. You cannot escape this journey. Why? Because life is always life and you are that and 
you can't run from life, meaning you can't run from yourself. You, there's no getting out of this. And this is also something that you figure out very, very quickly on the journey. And you also figure out, if you haven't yet already, I want to share this with you, that the only thing that will give you a sense of peace and sanity and inner calmness is to connect to your beingness. If you stay in the mental body, ruminating on the narrative and the story and what's happened or what hasn't happened, what might happen and past and future, the storyline and the narrative, you will be sucked into duality, which is sucked into the mind. The mind is rooted in duality. The mind keeps you bouncing back and forth between past and future and keeps you focused on a narrative and a storyline and keeps you focused on anything but your present moment awareness, your presence. But the only thing that will bring you peace and sanity on this journey is detaching from the mind and coming into your heart space, your true sacred heart, your inner essence, your beingness, your divine presence, the energy of all that is that boundless, limitless energy that is you at your core. And I know, you know, don't take the, the tree metaphor, you know, to heart 100% because when you think of the trunk, you think of, okay, well, there's a trunk. And then there's space outside of the trunk that is not the trunk. There's everything around the trunk. And so this metaphor is not to be taken so um, literally because ultimately there is nothing but the trunk no matter what, everywhere, which is all just energy. So really there is no trunk. <laughs> but that's another recording. There really is just, for the purpose of this recording and this, and this yeah, transmission, the metaphor of the tree is to help clarify the connection that you're having which is not really truly a connection as I previously stated but to really help bring clarity on ultimately what you should be focusing on if you want to get out of the suffering basically the chasing external things outside of yourself is only going to lead to suffering especially if it's your twin flame a hundred percent thousand percent if it's your twin flame and that's what your divine counterpart is here to show you it's here to mirror back to you obviously it's here to trigger the core wounds and what that does is it mirrors back to you all of the places that you've actually been abandoning yourself and betraying yourself and running from yourself and saying to yourself, not necessarily consciously, but sometimes consciously, I'm not good enough. I need this to make me happy. I need this to make me feel safe. I need this to make me feel fulfilled. I need this to make me feel worthy. I need this to make me feel lovable. I need this to make me feel good enough. Ultimately, that is what is being brought to your awareness and your... And, um, your soul, your the other part of you, which is you, your twin flame, which is just your soul in another body, is here to reflect that back to you. Because those are the belief systems that the ego really rides on top of, right? The ego loves to repeat patterns of victimhood and not feeling good enough and not feeling lovable and and not feeling whole, not feeling complete and not feeling safe. And the ego will keep you trapped in the narrative and the story over and over and over and over again or keep you trapped in the past or keep you projecting into the future 
over and over and over and over again and do everything that within its power to keep you from being present. And when I say ego, I'm referring to just the egoic mind, the trappings of the mental body, which is really distorted. The mind cannot understand spirit and the soul. To a degree, it's helpful to understand, but this ultimately can't be understood. Your divine counterpart is the essence of you. It's not your mental body. It's not something that you can think about. It's not something that you can understand. It's your very core. It's your very beingness. It's If you were to be silent for a minute and close your eyes or just keep your eyes open, but if you were to be silent for a minute, if you want to be silent right now after I say this and tap into the essence of your being, which is not something you can put your finger on. It's not something that you can grasp or hold on to. I think Alan Watts said that realizing, and I'm totally just paraphrasing here, but realizing your true self, your true nature is kind of like biting your own teeth. There's nothing else to say. By the time you speak, you've already said too much. This is a journey of going inward, and silence is your bridge. It's your gateway. Silence and stillness is your gateway home to your heart. And so you can understand then if you're constantly trapped in the mental body, going back and forth, replaying old situations or dramas or traumas or stuck in the narrative and stuck in the storyline you are anything but being silent or still you are trapped in duality you are trapped in the mind matrix you are trapped in in the egoic mind that is rooted on fear lack scarcity you are here to transcend that and move into abundance, love, freedom. The opposite of that, right? And oftentimes it is the suffering that brings us to our knees that gets us finally to open our eyes and begin to see through the untruths. And this is oftentimes the first time you're not able to run and, and, and numb out and cope anymore to all of these triggers. So you'll notice that any previous coping mechanisms that used to work in the past no longer work. Maybe you've even outgrown them. They don't even resonate with you anymore. But anything that you've used to numb out or to run or to resist or to fight or to move away from or to suppress or to reject no longer works. Anything you used to cling to for validation no longer works and will actually backfire in your face. And so you're being forced to go inward and all of your old lifelines are just gone. You're here to alchemize that. You're here to finally move through it so your ego can no longer run the show by riding on top of those core wounds and keeping you trapped in these cyclical patterns. So you're here to alchemize that. And how do you alchemize it? You no longer run from it. You no longer run from the feelings of unworthiness or lack or scarcity or not feeling safe. And you begin to embrace and accept yourself exactly how you are. And you begin to love yourself unconditionally. And you begin to accept your body and love your body unconditionally. And you you begin to accept yourself. 
and you begin to face what comes up. So the fears, the betrayal, the abandonment, the, the, the sadness, the anger, all of the things that are bubbling up, you are now facing them consciously. You are willing to suffer consciously for the time being in order to alchemize them and allow that to move through you. So you're not dwelling in them in order just to dwell and identify with these, uh, you know, what is perceived to be negative, right? You're not dwelling in them so you can claim victimhood and things like that. But what you are doing is you're giving it space and you're honoring what comes up and you're recognizing where it came from and 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 why it's there and and you're bringing compassion to the equation conscious compassion for yourself which also leads to compassion for others and everybody else that's involved and so ultimately through healing these core wounds you realize that you've always been whole you've always been perfect that you you can't actually be abandoned because or betrayed i mean yes things can happen in the physical reality but you begin to shift your identification from being the leaf on the tree to being a sovereign divine being that is a goddess or a god you know your god or goddess energy within you your divine essence the divine being that you are and as you sh begin to shift your I identification from being the leaf and feeling separate feeling like you're out there on the you know on a limb by yourself with the world to protect yourself against and all of these other leaves to have relationships with and you begin to identify with the source of all that is and you realize that you're one with all of it and you're one with life you're one with all the leaves and you're one with all of the individualized essences and souls and everything it's all made up of the same stuff and you're one with all of it you are all of it therefore you are life which is why you're not able to escape this process because life knows where life is life is always there for you there's no getting out of this when you're ready to wake up from the illusion of separation and your soul has taken that path this is something that finds you it's not something that you truly you know bring about this is something that is already decided this is something that call it the divine call it divine intelligence call it infinite intelligence whatever you want to call it when it's ready to wake up within you and experience its truth through your physical vessel then you will be guided and the fact that you met your twin flame means that's exactly what's happening you're having an awakening and you're awakening to your true divine essence and the truth of who you truly are which is the source of all things which is the source of life which is love which is all of it and you begin to go down these rabbit holes uh, that peel away layer after layer after layer after layer of illusion and layer after layer after layer after layer of belief systems and layer after layer after layer of, you know, patterns and conditioning until you've stripped away all of the untruth and you've come home to yourself and home to your core essence resting in and abiding in peace and presence and this journey and your divine counterpart everybody's in on it everybody's in on it everybody that you've ever experienced in your lifetime that has triggered the shit out of you and it's forced you to go inward now as you reflect on those because what happens is there's a lot of things that come up to the surface. Memories will start to be processed. Things will start to come up and you'll start to see patterns and you'll start to see that that all of it has been lining up for you for this very moment, for your realization. 
and that everybody this whole time has been in on it, playing the perfect role at the right time perfectly for your realization, for your homecoming. If you would like support on your journey and you're ready to fully claim your divine sovereignty as a divinely worthy woman, I invite you to check out Embody the Empress, which is my divine feminine monthly immersion. You can check out all the details in the caption below this video. And until next time, I hope this finds you well. Namaste.